<laughs> Praise the Lord. Ratchet Knucklehead here, a.k.a. Brother Everly Jr. Brothers and sisters, we turn our Bibles to John chapter 17, and we'll be looking at verse 22, and it reads, And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, to the admission, to the application, to the distribution of this great word, taken from the greatest book that man could ever possess. And my brother, this is God's word. We give God all the honor, all the glory, all the praise in the precious name of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. In the garden, when Satan uh, tricked Adam and Eve to partake of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil um what happened was the, the glory was lost you know in psalm chapter 8 verse 5 uh, the psalmist david says that man was crowned with glory and honor and that glory and that honor it was not just on their head. It was just enveloped around them. It encompassed them. And that glory is actually God's good opinion of, the, of, of man. That glory that was crowned on Adam and Eve was God's good opinion on man. But because the, uh, by being tricked by the enemy the and um, Adam and Eve lost that glory became fearful but like the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 where it says that well we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God and that glory of God is God's good opinion of us but Lo and behold, God had a plan. God wanted to get that glory back to man. And he was going to use his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to accomplish that. And when we see in Luke chapter 2, where it says in verse 8, how in the same country, the shepherds were abiding in the fields and by the flocks in the night. And the angel of the Lord appeared. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were fearful. And they were afraid. But the angel of the Lord said, Fear not. Behold, I bring good news of great tidings, of great joy. For unto you this day, in the city is born to you this day in the city of David is born unto you a savior Christ the Lord and this will be a sign you shall see a child in swaddling clothes in a manger and then after that announcement the angels came and started singing glory to God in the highest and peace and goodwill to all men see glory was now given to our lord and savior jesus christ and what did our lord and savior jesus christ say when he gave that high priestly prayer in john chapter 17 verse 22 he says the glory which thou hast given to me i have given to them that they may be one as we are one and so Jesus Christ came, was born, so that he could give us the glory. And that glory is God's good opinion of us. And when we believe on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ after hearing the gospel, we, 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 we become the righteousness of God. And not only that, but our, 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 the glory is restored. He, and, and, and when we receive the righteousness, he, he takes our sins, he takes our shame, he takes our guilt, and, and he gives us his righteousness. And simultaneously, we are, are, the glory of God is restored. And so when our Lord and Savior Jesus gives that high priestly prayer, he says, 
the glory that you gave to me, I've given to them. That they may be one as we are one. So now that we have the glory, we're one with Christ. And what are some of the features? What are some of the benefits of having that glory? We know or are conscious how much God loves us, how much God has saved us, and how much God has forgiven us of all our sins. You know, in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, it reads, The Lord thy God is in the midst of thee, is mighty, and he will save you. And he will rejoice over you with joy. And he will rest in his love for you. And watch this. He will joy over you with singing. Because you have the glory on you. And, 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 it, and now God has a good opinion of you. And, and so you're, you're, you're saved. You're saved. And you know, the, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, it says... I have written you these things that believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and if you believe in the name of the Son of God. And so we see that aspect of the glory. We see sandwiched between knowing that you have eternal life, you believe in the name of the Son of God. So you believe in the name of the Son of God, that's the bread. And then you know that you have eternal life. That's the meat, the crutch. And then the other bread would be to know, to, the, the, uh, the believe in the name of the Son of God. So you have that divine sandwich. And in that divine sandwich, you know that you have eternal life. The glory of God has been restored. You also have the forgiveness of sins. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, 2 verse 13 it says and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh he has quickened you he has joined you with him and who's him our lord and savior jesus christ and watch this colossians chapter 2 verse 13 and he has forgiven you of all your trespasses all your trespasses and so we have uh, 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 we, we are eternally saved. We are forever forgiven. And, and what's the aspect of also having that glory restored? We also know that we are loved by God. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3, he says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And that everlasting love is the agape love. A, a love that's not based on you, but based on, on, on God. And he loves you. And watch this. He has loved you with an everlasting love. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. I have loved you with an everlasting love, and I've drawn you with loving kindness. And that loving kindness, another, uh, another way of thinking of that loving kindness, that's grace. And grace is that undeserved, unmerited, unearned favor. That, that draws, and, it's, and, and when we think about the person of grace, that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The glory has been restored. And now, when you walk out that conscious about how much God loves you, how much God has forgiven you of all your sins, and how much you have eternal life, you're, eternal, you're eternally saved, you're forever forgiven, and you are, you are, you are deeply loved. And when you walk in that reality and you use the responsibility of faith to believe on that, you are now walking in the glory of God that's been restored to you. And so when we think about those, those, those angels this, this, just saying, behold, fear not, behold, I come with bringing uh, bringing great news of great tidings, of great joy unto you. For unto you this day, unto you is born, is born to you a Savior. And that Savior is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ the Lord. And so, 
glory, glory in the highest, and peace and goodwill to all men, because now glory has been restored. <laughs> Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his constitute. May the Lord give you peace. And I commend you all to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up in inheritance to those who are sanctified in the precious name of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now to him that is able to keep you from falling and present you flawless in the presence of his glory, both glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forevermore. Amen. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king peace on earth and mercy mild god and singers reconcile joyful all ye nation rise join the triumph of the sky with the energetic host proclaim christ is born in bethlehem Hark the angels, angels sing Glory to the newborn king <laughs> God bless <laughs> Agape love